Hello, Larry Bryan with you again. As you may remember, the quiz was to name all the types of trolley cars you can think of that were made for specialized use, not different variations of traditional passenger cars. They could be purposely built or a converted car. However, excluded were maintenance and work cars of any type. That means excluded were cranes, sweepers, plows, dump cars, freight motors, maintenance away cars, tower cars, etc. No work cars of any type. Before I start, my thanks to Rob Brogel, Stan Duro, Kelly Buffum, and Galen Semperbond for their input. There were a few cars on their list that I wasn't familiar with. And please don't complain that I didn't list your favorite service car that ran in Skeeter Itch, West Virginia, back in 02 or whatever. There's a ton of images out there, and I want to make this a quick, interesting video, not a boring, oh God, will you die and stop droning already video. Plus, it takes a lot of time to research and produce these things, and I'm not getting any younger. So, let's go. First, we have the cars which I think most will think of, private and parlor cars. In our collection, we have number 1500 from the Northern Ohio Traction and Light Company. The Shoreline Trolley Museum has Connecticut Company number 500. I wish I was able to find a good color picture of her. But here's a copy of a postcard showing her interior. Here's a parlor car from the Berkshire Hill Street Railway. It's similar to a number 1500 as the end of the car has windows that are almost floor to ceiling. The front left corner is actually a door which is open. Note the steps. Next is observation and tour cars. Vancouver, BC also had observation cars like Montreal. And here's two examples, this one and that one on the last trip in 1950. Many system offered tours and I discovered in the Los Angeles, California area, you could book a unique 28 mile tour visiting 10 beaches and eight cities, all for $1. Here's a picture of a car that ran the balloon route. Note the excursion car and observation car signage. There were also US mail cars. Here's a couple of examples. Note this car ran under a two wire overhead. From what I read, mail cars were usually white, although this example at the Shoreline Trolley Museum wasn't. Moving on, we're also funeral cars. Here's a nice example from, the, uh, uh, from Chicago. Note the special door on the side of the car for loading and unloading the casket. Here's a neat drawing I came across of the funeral car Dolores that operated in Baltimore. Reading, reading the fine print, it was originally a combine passenger express car built in 1897 and was converted to a funeral car in 1900. Can't forget a freight cars. This is a unique one, number 3017, operated by the Montreal Tramways. It's single-ended and its rear half is open to facilitate loading freight. Now let's look at some rarer cars. This one is a milk car. This is a car used for transport of workers at a Davenport, Iowa cement plant. Here's Worcester Polytech Institute's experiments and test car. It traveled throughout New England testing the power systems of electric railways. There's another group of cars I'll throw in the mix even though they weren't specially built. They were decorated cars. We have our electric sleigh and electric toboggan during Winterfest and I came across some other decorated cars that served a special purpose once in a while. So I figured I'd include them. Here's a Christmas car that toured the streets of Seattle, Washington during Christmas seasons in the 1930s. How about that huge speaker on the roof? Here's a couple of cars decorated for the 4th of July. Can you, can you figure this one out? It's a car and trailers decorated for the 1897 presidential campaign of William McKinley. Uh, it was taken in San Diego, California. And we can't forget the Cook County Hospital shuttle car or the prison car operated by the Quebec provincial government. Note the lack of windows. Now we get to what is probably my favorite. My thanks to Kelly for bringing it to my attention. It's the Montreal Tramways band car built for their employee band. Ain't it cute? Note it has freestanding chairs, not benches. We're down to the last few now. This is one I was thinking of, and Kelly knew it. The Duluth, Minnesota Fire Trolley. America's only firefighting streetcar. Needing fire service on Park Point, a four-mile spit of land which became isolated from the city of Duluth, by recently dug ship canal, the car served from 1907 to 1931 when it was replaced by a conventional fire engine after an automobile bridge was built across the channel. Even more unique, here's a car that was used just up the road in Springfield, Massachusetts. 
is the Springfield Street Railway horse-drawn steam fire engine transport car. It was built to provide quick access to fires in outlying areas of Springfield. Built by Watson in 1897, it was 30 feet long and weighed 7 tons. It would split for loading of the apparatus and would be pulled by a streetcar. I saw pictures of this car years ago, but couldn't remember where. My thanks to Bert Johansson for lending copies of the pictures along with their description. Last on the list isn't a trolley car, but I added it because it's a unique application of a streetcar, a horse streetcar. Used in what is now Englewood, Colorado for transporting passengers up a long hill, the Cherry Lynn horse car had a reinforced platform. After pulling hard and reaching the top of the hill, the horse would be unhitched and would climb onto the platform to ride the car back down the hill, letting gravity do the work. Well, that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed seeing these cars, which were a unique part of America's trolley car history. Until next time, take care.